So for today's movie review, I'll be reviewing the movie Ant-Man, the 12th overall film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, when I first heard they were making an Ant-Man film, the director of Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead, and Scott Pilgrim, Edgar Wright, was originally supposed to be directing the movie. Hell, I heard he actually wanted to make an Ant-Man movie since the original Spider-Man film came out. But over time, there were some creative differences between him and the studio, so he decided to leave and someone else took over. And also, between this and Avengers Age of Ultron, I was looking more forward to Age of Ultron than I did this film. Like, I told myself I was going to see this film anyways, just to see how it fits in. But the real question is, did Ant-Man really need his own movie? The plot of Ant-Man revolves around this cat burglar named Scott Lang, who gets this job offer from this retired scientist named Hank Pym, who wants him to don the Ant-Man suit, becoming the second generation Ant-Man, in order to break into the company that Hank Pym started, in order to steal a piece of knockoff equipment from his former Proje before he sells it to the black market. In terms of what I liked about the movie, the studio managed to find a way to make this ridiculous idea of having this dude shrink down to the size of an ant in control of army vans work for a film! And the movie has a really good sense of humor. Like, I think this is funnier than 2014's Gardens of the Galaxy, and that was a pretty historical movie at already. The overall design of the Ant-Man suit looks pretty kick-ass. Like, in comparison to the comic book version, like, the comic book version, to me, looks really goofy. The one on film looks pretty badass. And I do like how the central theme of the movie is about the passing of a torch, because you have the original Ant-Man, Hank Pym, who basically gives Scott Lane the suit to become the next Ant-Man. Like, I thought that was a cool idea. And also, I do like how all the films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe are their own subgenre because with the first Captain America movie, it's a period piece of World War II or whatever. Then you got, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, which is like a space opera. Then you got Ant-Man, which is a heist film. That's something we haven't seen yet in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a heist film. I do like how the movie serves as a nice epilogue to Phase 2 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but also being a prologue for the Phase 3 movies. In terms of what I disliked about the movie, the CGI for the most part was good, while other parts of the movie looked like it wasn't quite fully rendered. And I did say the movie was really funny, but there's this one character who's, well, basically like comical relief. Some of his jokes were well, while other jokes I didn't think had a good payoff from time to time. Also, I just hate the villain. It's it's basically just Iron Monger from Iron Man 1 all over again. Like, they kind of really come up with a better choice of villain. Like, if you don't know your Ant-Man mythology, basically, once Hank Pym gives Scott Lang the Ant-Man suit in the comics, Hank Pym becomes another superhero called Yellow Jacket. And the Yellow Jacket in the movie is a villain. It's just, ugh. Like, they screw up some of the mythology in the film, for sure. And also, they haven't, couldn't come up with a better idea for a villain as well. Like, why not use Radiation Man, or Whirlwind, or Ghost, Taskmaster, somebody else? That's not a knockoff idea. Like, we've seen this done to death now. Just, ugh. Now, as for the Ant-Man characters, I'm going to start with the main Ant-Man, Scott Lane. Basically, he's a father who wants to quit his days of being a cat burger after spending some time in jail to hang out with his daughter, who's under the custody of his ex. However, this is complicated by the fact that Dr. Hank Pym, the original Ant-Man, wants Scott Lane to become the new Ant-Man, and Scott Lane becomes the new Ant-Man. If I had to describe Scott Lane as being the new Ant-Man, he's kind of like George Clooney from Ocean's Eleven. He's essentially the brains of the operation controlling both the people that work for him and a whole shit ton of ants. So yeah, long story short, the Scott Lane Ant-Man of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is basically George Clooney. As for the original Ant-Man, Hank Pym, he basically serves as the mentor to Scott Lane when he becomes Ant-Man. And if there's one thing I liked about this version of Hank Pym, I love how blunt he is about certain things in the movie. Like, at one point, um, Scott Lang's just like, why don't you call this one Anthony? And Hank Pym's just like, are you dumb or are you fucking retarded? Grant, he never actually said in the movie. But I think that's just the thing that was just going through his mind. Just like, really? Then I do like how, even though he's not the main Ant-Man of this movie, I do like how he has some control over ants by having like this earpiece that allows him to communicate with the ants. So I thought that was a pretty cool way of making Hank Pym Ant-Man to some degree without him dying to suit. So I thought that was a cool thing they did with Hank Pym. 
As for Hope Van Dyme, she's basically the daughter of Hank Pym, who decided to take her mother's last name. I thought that was a nice touch. But as for her character, she's cold, she's killing, she's brutal. Long story short, she's a femme fatale. And I do like the relationship she has with her father because they're so distant. But you know what? It's kind of understandable because her dad, Hank Pym, never really told her much about her mother when she was little or in terms of what happened to her. So in terms of the reason why they're distant from one another, it makes complete sense. As for the like, comical relief of the movie, basically you have the one character who is the comical relief. And as for the other two characters, you got one guy who's your stereotypical hacker and the other guy who's your getaway driver. And yeah, that that that's about it for these characters. As for the main villain of the movie, Darren Cross, aka Yellow Jacket, like I said earlier, he's basically the Iron Monger from the first Iron Man movie, but the difference between Darren Cross and Abadana Stain, Abadana Stain Iron Man 1 was calm and cool throughout the entire movie, whereas Darren Darren Cross, he started out being calm and cool at the beginning, but as the movie progressed, he became really fucking crazy. And he becomes a bit more bloodthirsty once he dons the yellow jacket suit. So for my final verdict of Ant-Man, despite the ridiculous premise and taking certain liberties with the source material from the Ant-Man comics, the movie managed to be really entertaining and really refreshing for an origin story. Like, I don't know what Marvel does, but they managed to take an origin story and somehow made it refreshing here. And the movie on top of that is really funny. And before I give my final rating, what did everybody else have to say about Ant-Man? So it looks like the movie got generally good reviews. And so for my final rating of Ant-Man, I give it a 4 out of 5. Among the Phase 2 movies, which one was your favorite? And what movie in Phase 3 are you looking forward to? And see you later.